Okay, hi everyone. My name is Xin Yang, and today I will have my senior speech. And before I start, I want to inform you that my speech might be a little bit or even quite long, but please don't be worried, just calm down and listen to my talk because I think it deserves your attention. All right, so no more chit chat, let's start. First, I want to show you some pictures and then I want to, sh I want to see the reaction of you guys. Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> What do you think about those images? Beautiful. No, I don't, I don't believe you think so. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think, I think I can see it from most of you guys' face. It is kind of scary, right? Or horrible and uncomfortable, uncomfortable to look at. However, today my topic is about those insects. And I will talk about our fears toward uh, insects. And I believe that after my talk today, your attitude um, towards those insects might be changed a little bit. So at the beginning, I want to tell you a personal story about me. So let's go back to the time when I was an elementary school student. On that day, I was on a picnic with all of my classmates. And everything is fine, you know? The blue sky, green tree and grass and beautiful flowers, just like a normal picnic. But one thing stands out is a, black, a big black beetle. And it's really a cute joy because everyone else, when they saw that beetle is creeping, was creeping on the ground, they thought it, it, is, very, it, is, it is very annoying. But I, did, I, did, I didn't think so because I really didn't think it does any matter. But one of my classmates, at that time, he just went out, went to that black, went to that black beetle, and then stepped it on it and crushed it into death. <laughs> it's a very bloody scene that makes the black beetle into a beetle paste. <laughs> However, and I think it is even more uncomfortable to look at. But everyone else seems to feel a kind of relief towards that beetle paste. Then I just, say, I just said with my classmates, why did you just kill it? It's alive. But, I, but, but my classmate, he answered me like this. How can you call that thing alive? Well, it is a very confusing answer to me, especially to me at that age. Then I thought, all right, insects are not worthy to be called life because people think so. That makes sense. A few years later, I became a middle schooler. And one day in school, I saw a grasshopper that accidentally entered the school building. Then I thought, maybe I should put it into somewhere into some place where it could survive, like the grassland beside the playground. Then I just cut it and then brought it downstairs. But when I was going downstairs, another student saw me and he saw I was carrying that grasshopper. So then he just blocked my way and then he said, please don't hurt it, it's alive. So in my concept that is already shaped by the others, Insects are not worthy to be called life. But this student, he said that insects, they are actually life, and I should not hurt them. So it is a really touching response that makes me going to cry, but I couldn't think that much. Then I just, I just respond to him, no, I'm not trying to hurt it, but I'm trying to rescue it. I'm going to put it downstairs to the grassland beside the playground. But that student, he still said, no, your current behavior seems going to hurt it. All right, since this student, he said, I will, I'm, I'm hurting the grasshopper. So maybe 
he knows how to take care, he knows how to take care of it, right? So maybe I should just give it to him. So I handed, I handed the grasshopper to that student, but when that student saw I am handing him the grasshopper, he just jumped a step, a step backward and then said, no, take it away, it is so scary. <laughs> so I think it's a very interesting phenomenon since a lot of people, they don't want me to hurt the insects, but Meanwhile, they are afraid of insects. So who will be the people who really comes out to help those lost insects? After that event, I did a lot of research to figure out why are people afraid of insects. Then I found some very interesting findings. But first, I want to show you some data. So this is the percentage of the people who exhibit a fear of insects in the United States. And we know the total population of the United States is about 300 million of people. And the percentage of people who exhibit, who exhibit a fear of insects is about 5.8%. And 5.8% means that almost 19 million of people are afraid of insects. And is actually it's just a rough estimation. So why are so many people afraid of them? Well, after my, after my research, I found two possible explanations. First explanation is that in the ancient period, those ancient human beings might be threatened by some poisonous creatures such as um, spiders, scorpions, or wasps. And most of them are insects or insect-like creatures which will make them to generate negative feelings toward insects. And another possible explanation is that in modern era, some people, they might have experienced some, some events with insects. For example, um, being bitten by a bee, which will also leave an impression on them and then make them to, feel, to, to be afraid of insects. And I think all of I think both two explanations are understandable, and I won't force anybody to love or take care of those insects. But I just want to use my influence to change your attitude even a little bit, because I just want to show you that insects, they are not that horrible, or at least they are, they are not complete, completely useless things that are not worthy to be called life. So, and they actually have some very valuable characteristics. And about those characteristics, I have a lot of things to share. But here today, in brief, I just want to compare the insects community with our own society to show you how fantastic they are and how well they can, comp they can operate their small community just like us even like our economy. So now let's introduce some background settings. Imagine in the forest, a tree falls down and it's dead. And we know after an organism is dead, it will be decomposed and, and then recycled. So in order to decompose and reutilize it, insects need to participate in this process and then make a lot of uh, a great amount of effort, efforts. And in order to show it more clearly, I will divide this process into uh, several different stages. And during the first stage, since the tree, um, or because it's dead, we can just call it wood. Since the wood is still fresh and firm, it might still like, connect it with the trunk and it cannot be used by most of the organism. So how can we make the recycle start? Well, we need the, participant, we need the, particip we need the participation of one species of insects, which is the longhorn beetle. The longhorn beetle, in many people's knowledge, they are actually vermin because they harm a lot of fruit trees, but actually they are very essential to this recycle because 
they can use their jaw to open a hole on the wood and then lay their eggs in it. After their eggs hatched, their larvas will make tunnels inside the wood. On one hand, those tunnels can dissemble the inside structure of the wood and then make it less firm than before. On the other hand, those tunnels can also allow other insects to enter the wood and then to do the further steps. And after the long horn beetle, the wood will become weaker and softer. And those weakened and softened woods are good seedbeds for some insects like um, stag beetles and rhinoceros beetles. Those insects are usually big guys with strong jaws and horns, which can help them to open, uh, to open a hole on the wood and then lay their eggs in it. And because the wood is already utilized by the longhorn beetle, the inset structure of it is less firm than before, so the larva of stuck beetles and, and rhinoceros beetles love this kind of wood. So they will live inside it, eat the shards inside the wood, and finally become, become an adult. So after those two stages, the wood, it, it will probably be rotten, and there will be some fungus, or as we call it, mushrooms, grow on it. And those fungus can attract another species of insect, which is the fungus beetle. Like their name, fungus beetle, they come to this wood and then live in the tunnels that are made by the rhinoceros rhinocer beetles or um, longhorn beetle in order to consume those fungus. Then you might doubt, why are they also contributors to the recycle? They are just guests who come here to eat. Well, you should reconsider their name, fungus beetle. Because they eat fungus, and sometimes they will carry the spores, or as we call it, the seeds of fungus on their body. And then when they come to the rotten wood, those spores might drop on the surface of the wood and then will grow into a fungus. And more fungus will obviously accelerate the process of the decomposition. Then, after so many different um, processes, the wood will finally become some debris like humus. And then the final step will be completed by some insects like cockroach or um, scarab beetle. And then the wood will finally completely re-enter the ecosystem and then become the nutrients of vegetation. And the vegetation will be eaten by animals and other insects, and a long cycle will start again. So it's really like our own economic growth. See, the economic, the economic growth is consists of uh, a lot of different exchanges, which include the buyers and sellers. And that's because then they unconsciously, they make the, they make the currency to flow and then they push the economy forward. So actually every individual inside the circle of the uh, economic growth, they are contributors. And insects' words are actually similar. Like inside the circle of the, of the decomposition, each insect is linked with each other, all for one, one for all. So even one, although one single insect might seem insignificant, but as long as all of them are working together and they are doing their own parts, they can make their habitat into a better place. And now, think about ourselves. We are small to the entire human population, but just because of all of us, all of the human beings, the human society can keep its operation. And everyone is a, dro is a drop in the ocean, but everyone is essential to the human society. So what I really want to say is, no matter whether you are great or you are big or small, as long as you do, you do your part, you are great. Even small insects, they can make a big change in, if they can make a big change in the environment, why not us? As um, each of us has limited strength, 
but as long as all of us are working together, everything is possible. So in the end, I just want to I just want you guys to be maybe less afraid of insects in the future. And those small or probably horrible creatures, they can also serve as the role model of your life. Thank you. <laughs>